Hi, it's attorney Richard Dwyer. I'm in Northern California, in the Bay Area. I have an office in Palo Alto, California, um, as well as Mountain View. I'm a graduate of the same school attended by Elizabeth Holmes, whose trial for, among other things, fraud starts this week. This is a trial I hope everyone looks at because it's going to involve some serious issues. Let's talk about it. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now in the Bay Area we celebrate entrepreneurs. We want to support people who are risk takers, who are trying to come up with products that improve our quality of life, that move their field further. Now Elizabeth Holmes, at a very young age, left Stanford University to start her company Theranos, which was supposed to be able to diagnose illnesses that a person had by pricking their finger and analyzing a very small amount of blood. Right At the time, it sounded groundbreaking. It seemed to open the door to a new era in medicine. Right, You'd be able to get diagnosed off a simple blood test. Well, now she's being tried for fraud, and folks, the prosecution has a lot of evidence, right? Let's talk about the people who were defrauded, the extent of the fraud. According to the prosecution, Elizabeth Holmes accepted over seven hundred million dollars. Let me repeat that. Seven hundred million dollars from investors based on representations as to what the company had done in the past and as to what their product was capable of doing. Now among the misstatements and I believe she's going to have a very difficult time beating the charges. Among the misstatements was the claim that the company's technology was being used by the United States Department of Defense in combat situations. Right? People were out in the field problems arose, they needed to be diagnosed quickly. The idea was that the Steranos test was then able to quickly determine from their blood what was bothering them. That statement was false, according to the prosecution. Theranos also claimed that it had a $100 million revenue stream. You can imagine an investor about to invest millions of dollars wants to make sure that what he's investing in is lucrative, can generate profits that'll compensate that investor for the risk being taken. In actuality, Theranos was not generating a hundred million dollars as revenue. No, their revenue was more like a hundred thousand dollars according to the prosecution. So Elizabeth Holmes has major problems here. Right? They're excellent lawyers all over. Her lawyers as well as the prosecution's lawyers. Now where the case raises eyebrows, where I believe people like you and I need to pay close attention to this case is in her defense. She is claiming that her boyfriend, Ramesh Balwani, who was 19 years older than her, 
right? She met him when she's either 18 or 19 years old. Let's say she's 19 at the time. That means that he is 38 years old, right? 38 years old when they meet. She is claiming that Balwani, who became the president of Theranos, was abusive to her. And that this abuse led her to make mistakes. In other words, to rebut claims of fraud, she's trying to claim that she was manipulated into the fraud, that she didn't intend to commit the fraud. This is one line of defense she's pursuing, right? Let's just read some of what's in her filings. She claims that Balwani was sexually abusive. Here's the quote. Withdrew affection if she displeased him. Controlled what she ate. How she dressed. How much money she could spend who she could interact with. She also contends that he, here's the quote, through, beginning of the quote, hard, sharp objects at her. Close quote. She also claimed that he controlled her sleep. Now, let me backtrack right here. I need to pivot. Let me point out that I've represented women in domestic violence cases, and I've obtained temporary and permanent injunctions against their abusers. Let me point out that I'm very sympathetic to domestic violence claims, right? My father, May he rest in peace was a social worker years ago in New York City, right? I was raised in a house that was very progressive with strong women. Now that said, let me also point out something else. I'm very concerned about the treatment of people of color in these cases, right? I look at the Amanda Knox case and I'm simply astonished that she blamed her black employer, a gentleman named Lumumba, who was proven to be innocent, who wasn't even at the murder scene in that case. American history is replete, and I mean replete, with cases where black defendants, I should say people of color who were defendants, were falsely accused of terrible crimes. I encourage people here to research the Scottsboro Boys, right, where one of the alleged victims later recanted, admitted, that the story was fallacious. Now here, what I'm gonna be looking at, because I'm a little bit startled by this defense, understand Holmes is the head of the company. I privately feel it's a disservice to women for a female executive to say, okay, well, maybe I did some things I shouldn't have done as the founder and head of my company. But that was because of problems in my relationship. Right, I have problems with that. Well here, what I want, well what I'm going to focus on the next few days is exactly how Holmes's boyfriend is treated here, exactly what the evidence is of the abuse, right? Because understand, 
the boyfriend, of course, was a person of color. Right? Full disclosure, I was born in Kingston, Jamaica. Right? I'm now a U.S. citizen, proud to be a U.S. citizen. But I am concerned about the treatment of people born overseas in our judicial system. The boyfriend was born in Pakistan. Pakistan. There's an interracial aspect here to the case. Holmes is white. The boyfriend is not. Holmes, of course, with a mountain of evidence showing misrepresentations by the company, showing a product that was not as advertised. The Wall Street Journal did an expose a few years ago on Theranos' product and found that it had problems. In a situation here where there were misstatements where the product was overrepresented, where the firm's income stream was somehow magnified from the actual $100,000 to $100 million. I'm simply astonished to hear that the founder is blaming her person of color boyfriend. So let's find out here if there's anyone in Elizabeth Holmes's social circle who's going to come forward and testify that Elizabeth Holmes, who was a CEO of a company that reached a $9 billion market cap, who was the face of the company. I'm sure many people listening to this video didn't even know she was in an interracial relationship. Right? Let's find out if there are any friends or any witnesses who can come forward and talk about statements Elizabeth Holmes made to them before this company unraveled, before the Wall Street Journal's expose, talking about how she was an abused woman. Right? Understand there have to be third parties involved here. Because the allegations claim that she, of course, was kept from her friends. Right? Let's just say maybe the boyfriend is guilty. Maybe the boyfriend manipulated his high profile, publicly known girlfriend. Right again, she was known in Silicon Valley. Theranos was a huge story. Some of the people who believe in Elizabeth Holmes include entrepreneur Tim Draper, a billionaire. Right, let's find out if this defense has any teeth or whether this is another situation. I say another situation of the person of color in the area code of wrongdoing being targeted by a criminal defendant, right? I'm paying close attention here, folks. Ramesh Balwani, who himself is going to be tried for fraud after the conclusion of this case, might be guilty of fraud. What I want to know is whether he is guilty of domestic violence. Right? I understand the age difference might be interpreted by some as an imbalance of power. Right? I just want to know whether these DV charges are supported by medical records. 
by police records, by witness statements, by contemporaneous writings. I want to know whether the couple attended therapy in the past and maybe there is a healthcare provider or a therapist who actually spoke with them and who actually heard about these alleged domestic violence claims. Balwani claims that he is completely innocent. He claims that he never made any money off Theranos. I'd like to know where all the money went. $700 million from investors? So this case is going to be a must-watch. It starts this week. The defendant is Elizabeth Holmes. Her company is Theranos. This is a Bay Area story, but I believe it's really a story of celebrity and the national interest. I do hope you give it a look. If you have any thoughts that you want to share here with the viewers on YouTube, please feel free to do so in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.